Hey, Facebook friends! This is exciting. This is my first official live video, hopefully of many. I am pretty sure I'm going to start my own YouTube channel, and I think that'll just kind of be like a home for these types of videos that I will start doing on Facebook and see where things go. So I hope you read the description because there's a lot we can talk about here and mainly I just opened it up for free tarot readings um, to test out work on this new very simple spread that I made up myself so that's been really cool for me and I'll share an example of that so you kind of have a feel for it and yeah um, I'm waiting for my iPad to turn on so that I can keep up with who is here and what questions are being asked. That's important, so bear with me. But um, while that is starting, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of open myself up a little bit. Um, kind of why I'm doing this, why I'm starting this. I recently have been going through so many changes. I recently have realized that I was brainwashed most of my life in a very high demand religion, <laughs> um, Mormonism, and I am trying to find my tribe. I am trying to find my people outside of everything I knew growing up. And so yeah, I'm doing what I love um, by doing these videos. These are the videos, or these are the topics that I am so passionate about in my life. And I am just so happy to be able to talk about them at all with anyone. So I'm like, just gonna throw it out here. So if it, if it sticks, then hopefully you'll come back. <laughs> okay, let's see, there's people here that I should say hi to that I cannot see but I'm glad you're here. And um, so I'm going to explain my options that I have here. Well, this is still loading. Sorry, it's taking forever. Um, okay, so here is my tarot deck of the evening. It is called the Star Seeker Tarot. It's gorgeous. I have so many tarot decks, so every single time is probably gonna be different. But, so that will be used for my tarot readings that I'm going to do. I'm going to do just basic two card readings. Um, it's going to be, it's called the this or that spread. So I'm going to basically just pull two cards for you. And it'll be like what you should be focusing on life right now versus what you shouldn't be. So hopefully that will make more sense. I also have my Animal Spirit Oracle, which is one of my favorite decks ever. So oracle cards are slightly different than tarot cards um, in that tarot has its own set of rules and meanings and there's 78 cards and they all have the same thing. There's just different like artwork styles and interpretations and so that's why I like to collect those. Oracle cards or oracle decks are different. Every single one is different. So I have this one because it's really fun because a lot of people just like to like, what's my spirit animal? Or it's like a really good check in, like where you kind of are evolutionary wise because there's kind of a hierarchy in how these cards are set up and in different in the different elements, I should say. And I also have this amazing Oracle deck called the Synchronicity deck or the Synchronicity Oracle. Um. Facebook isn't even on this thing. Okay, my bad, you guys. Let's see who's here. Oh my gosh, Shelly Johnson is watching. Fangirl moment. Hi. Hi, Ashley, Sarah, um, Brennan, Allie, Joe. Aw, thank you, Ashley. Okay, I'm so happy you guys are here. Um, and so if you want any of the things that I just offered, whether it be an, a spirit oracle, the two card thing, speak up. And there's also this option that comes with a dice. I love this one. If you're just like up for anything, it comes with this little dice and this card that tells you like basically what spread to do. So if you want that, just say, I want the dice spread. 
and I'll roll the dice and it will tell me how many cards to pull from this really awesome cool deck. I guess maybe I should show you these different things so you get an example. So this is the animal spirit oracle, which is really cool art. There's so many different options and the meanings behind them are really cool. Shelly, okay, cool. I will totally do a dice spread for you. These are the dice spread cards. They, I love the artwork here, you guys. It's just so gorgeous. The colors, everything. Um, Oracle cards are so cool because you'll just be surprised. There's so many different archetypes and meanings that we can come up with. Okay, so Shelly wants the dice spread. Rolling this pink dice. Oh, you got the number one. So you just need one card, Shelly. Let's see. Yep, just one card. So, what universal message does Shelly need right now? This is seriously like such a fangirl moment. I love you, Shelly and Mary. And the Latter-day Lesbian Podcast, everybody go listen to it because it changed my life for real. Not kidding. Okay, so Shelly, this is for you. What universal message does Shelly need? It's probably going to be like a big thank you because you're just going to get my energy coming out. Just a gratitude for you guys. But here we go. This is for Shelly. All right, Shelly. The artist. I told you, you are like an artist. I love your podcast so much because you are an artist in how you present your story. And art moves people. That's the whole point of art. And through your podcast, you are moving so many people, especially me. But I will read what this little booklet has to say. Abundant creativity, let's keep it back, with sparks of color that fly from your fingertips, maker of beautiful things and designs. And that's so true for you in your sleepy shorts, Another podcast you all should listen to if you ever have trouble falling asleep. Seriously, best podcast to fall asleep to. I love it. Um, so Sleepy Shorts and Latter-day Lesbian and also, Shelly, your UC Places. Like, you have figured out how to use your voice as your art and you are an artist. And so thank you. Thank you <laughs> for sharing your art. And what a beautiful way to start things up. Just like that blatant... Thank you for being an artist message. So there you go, Shelly. Sarah, you want to win? It is your art form, Shelly, 100%. Thank you, Joe. Yes. <laughs> totally get it. Okay, who is next? I am going back. Um, we have Sarah. Okay, Sarah, I think you're next. Yes, it was an LDL shout out for sure. So Sarah, you want the dice spread, okay. Okay, I'm doing it for Sarah Elizabeth. Rolling the dice. You got the six. See, six. <sighs> In case you needed to see that. Okay, so Sarah, <sighs> six cards. Okay, so this spread It's just, okay, there's not much. We're just gonna go for it. See what these six cards have to say. So universe must have a more complex message for you to warrant six cards. So we shall see, this should be interesting. This is always fun because you have no idea, like as I look at each card individually, like it could be anything, but then once you could, like put them together, like in a spread of six cards or whatever, it becomes uh, so much more complex. Okay. So this is for Sarah. I'm gonna just Sarah. Universal message guidance for Sarah. 
Okay. I would probably normally shuffle a lot more. I feel like I'm not shuffling enough, but I'm going to have to get over it. So, okay, our first card. Empress, yes, queen. The empress is ultimate maternal energy. That's just that archetype right there. Um, the raven. Interesting, interesting. The raven has... Um, it's kind of like the, the symbol of synchronicities. Um, Shelly, if you're still here and all the LDL listeners, um, you guys talk about coincidence stories so much and I love it, but I always refer to it as synchronicities. Um, things that happen that you just can't explain, like things that you've been thinking about for a while in your head and somehow like you'll just see exactly what you're thinking about right in front of you sometimes somehow it can be like the smallest things and it can be big things but either way synchronicities are like just signs that you are in tune with the universe in a way um and that you're kind of like going the right direction anyway so let me keep going um the six cards so third gather so pretty i love this artwork you guys so so far we have the empress raven and gather fourth card we have spiritual guidance spiritual guidance makes sense and we have number five finder of lost things Look at how cute that is. It's like a little elephant, you guys. I love it. Like, I haven't even seen all these cards because I haven't had a chance to pull them for myself. Okay, so last card, speed. Nice, look at that energy there. Lots of energy. Okay, so let's put these all together. We have the Empress, the Raven, Gather, spiritual guidance finder of lost things and speed so i am definitely getting a sense of like you're looking for some type of spiritual community maybe religious i don't know but something where you feel like you need that spiritual guidance you're looking for spiritual guidance in a community or maybe you should be maybe this is the universe encouraging you to and you're, or maybe this is, you know what, I'm kind of getting a sense, maybe you're meant to start your own community because this Empress energy is like lady boss energy. It's the ultimate, the ultimate feminine, like divine feminine, like as opposed to the emperor. So the Empress is all about divine creation, that flowing energy of abundance and just that creation and energy that just oozes out and like nurturing and abundant and just like you can see it in this art here, you know? Um, so that came out as your first card. So I'm guessing maybe you've been having like thoughts or, or um, messages from the universe or God or whatever you call that or whatever you believe in saying maybe I should start something or maybe I'm looking for something because there's this um finder of lost things maybe you feel like you've finally found something kind of like me how I feel like I finally found my voice basically and like what I want to talk about so maybe you're noticing things that are coming up a lot that seem to point to you finding your direction in a leadership like a feminine leadership type of way and I do feel like it has to do with the community because the spiritual guidance and gather card and with the speed card being um, the last one that came up, it makes me think like, yeah, this, this is going to happen fast. Like the, these are changes that could come really um, quickly if you really wanted to make it happen. Once you gather with your right people, once you find, um, find your tribe, Maybe that's your lost thing. Find your community um, for that spiritual guidance and that gathering. And pay attention to the signs from the universe because they're probably coming to you a lot. And this is 
the universe telling you that you are on the right path when you see those things. So pay attention to them so you know when you're on the right path. So hopefully that made any sense. Let's see. Okay. Okay, good, Sarah. Sorry, I, I'm just now catching up. Good, you have been working on yourself. And that means that it's, so you're working on yourself. These changes that you're wanting are gonna come fast because that speed card, the last one that came up, for sure. And Mary's here too now, holy, I'm like fangirling right now so much. Like you guys are like gonna make me nervous. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I hope that helps, Sarah. Who is next? Did I see, did I miss anybody? Joe, Joe Evelyn, did you want something? Did I miss something? Let me know. I love you too, Mary. Mary, if you want something, let me know. Um, were you here for Shelly being an artist? That was cool. Um, Mary wants wine. What does Mary want? Because I have the options. Should we just keep doing the synchronicities? Oh, Evelyn, my bad. Okay, I'll do the synchronicities. Okay, rolling the dice. Okay, number four, you get four cards. Pretty simple. So just like Sarah's, we'll just see what cards come up and see what kind of narrative it tells. They all tell together. Okay, my bad. Um, yes, let me know. Sorry about the name thing. I'm so bad at names, you guys. Especially right now, my brain is so frazzled. <laughs> So please bear with me. Okay, I will definitely do the two cards for you um, after. For sure. So after Mary's four cards. And I haven't shown you guys this tarot deck yet. Like, I keep getting distracted, but it's beautiful. So I'm excited to show you guys that. Okay, so this is for Mary. She loves synchronicities. This is the Synchronicity Oracle so let's see what comes up from Mary. Okay. Okay. So card number one, we have gratitude. See, did I not say this was going to come up for one of you two? Because like my energy towards you guys is just gratitude. I knew that was going to come up. Um, next card, spiritual guidance again. Um, obviously you guys, you are clearly, and Mary, this is crazy. I just listened to your episode today. The something about Mary episode. This is crazy. Um, so yeah, I definitely feel grateful for your spiritual guidance. Let's see what else. Roots. You were talking about your roots today when I listened to it. Um, let's see. And Rebel! Oh my gosh! That is so cool for you, Mary. <laughs> this whole reading was a synchronicity right here. You're right. That's crazy. Um, yes, I think that speaks for itself. You have so many people that are grateful to you for your spiritual guidance and for you sharing your roots and being open and honest. And this goes for you, you too, Shelly and rebel with a cause literally you are the rebel with a cause and when i was listening to the enneagram episode and you were like feeling that eight energy <laughs> i'm sorry to bring this up again um but yeah um i was totally feeling that um eight energy in you and i was like she's probably an eight i'm not gonna like say anything <laughs> because i'm not trying to push you guys into anything but yeah you are that rebel with a cause, like, and it totally shines through. And you guys, like, who else would do a podcast with an ex-Mormon, like, a lesbian podcast? Like, like, 
it, you would have to be a rebel with a cause to like engage in that and to be so passionate about it. And it's helped so many people. Like I said, that spiritual guidance. So both of you, I'm so glad that you were here and got to see this because like it just shows you this is like the universe showing you my gratitude, especially, but everyone else's gratitude for you guys too. So total synchronicity right there. How cool was that? The synchronicity oracle gave us a synchronicity for the girl that loves synchronicities. Can't get better than that. Okay, so next we have the two card one with the star seeker tarot. Okay, so this is my, oh hi ducks. This is my ducks, hi. He's a good boy. Thank you guys, I'm so, I'm so grateful you guys are watching. Hi, welcome everybody. This is my two card reading for Evelyn, Ev what is it? You can call me Joe. Okay, I'm so sorry. I told you my brain is just not okay right now. I'm so sorry. Brandon, no, this is totally free. We're just talking here, having a good time. I am about to do a tarot spread for Joe. Thank you so much for making it easy for me. <laughs> um, and so, okay, I'm explaining this, this or that spread. So this is for Joe, and it will give her what she should be focusing on, basically. I don't like to use shoulds, but um, basically the first card is the universal message that you should be getting right now or what the universe has been trying to tell you versus the second card is basically um, how you might have been misinterpreting that. So I think it's a lot clearer than just doing one card answer, like one card draws for like a yes or no situation or um, wine for all. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've got my Gatorade here. Thank you for reminding me because I need a drink. I'm totally like out of whack with my body. Like I need to be reminded, like I need a drink sometimes. So thank you. Okay, so this is for Joe. This is for this or that spread. And um, I'll pull the cards and I think it'll make it a lot more clear. Or no, I'll tell you a story about this. Um, this how I use this spread today. That's what I was going to do. I forgot to do that in the beginning. So I used this spread today to because I wrote a letter to my mother with that was filled with some really honest things that I needed to express to her about how I grew up basically and her role in some things. And she left um, when things got hard. She went to stay with my brother across the country. So um, I, I just, I, and I was literally told that I was not allowed to speak to her. So um, that is kind of like what has been broiling for the last couple of months. And so I felt like I needed to get it all out somehow and write this letter and I was, so I wrote it out, it was really long, and um, I really debated about whether or not I was gonna send it, because I was like, man, this would be awesome if she could read this, just because like, it would be so informative for her about me. But I know that it, she might not want that. So I did this, this or that spread in this, in determining how I should go about, should I send this or should I not? And so I got, my this card was the Six of Swords, which the Six of Swords is all about, the Suit of Swords is about um, intellect, thoughts, mind. Um, it, it correlates with the suit or the element of air. So that's all about mental things and clarity. The Six of Swords in particular is about moving away from un from 
unclear thoughts. It's about moving into into clarity and moving out of a bad situation. It's about like in in the typical depiction of this card in the um, traditional Rider Waite deck, it's literally like six cards and two people on a boat and they're like getting away. <laughs> and so it's about movement and action. And in this deck, this is the deck that I used, it's incredible. Like if you want the, the whole story, you can go to my Instagram, it's in my bio. Um, I posted about it. So I got the Six of Swords and my for my this card and my not that card was the Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles is summed up in one word as perfectionism. It's about really working hard at trying to master something. Like it shows in the typical depiction of it, it shows somebody like chiseling away at um, like a pentacle, a coin, um, like trying to master their craft. And it's all about like this mastery and trying to reach perfection. And so when I had that six of swords, the this, not the eight of pentacles, it made so much sense in my mind. It clearly told me you need to move forward with your mother, get the mental clarity out there, move forward out of your brainwashing and stop trying so hard to be the perfect daughter for this woman who is never I'm never gonna be perfect for sorry if I get a little emotional I I've dealt with so many issues um mental health issues because of this because like everything nothing I can do is ever gonna be enough and so it was so helpful for me to do this spread that's why I'm telling this story because I realized I need to stop trying to be that perfectionist daughter that just tries to be exactly what my mom needs me or wants me to be. And I do need to focus on my mental health, my clarity, and my getting things out there that need to get out there so that we can move forward. And in this card, um, in this deck, the card that represented the six of pentacles or the six of swords it was like it's so touching to me because it's literally like a mother figure or you know it looks like um an older woman and an, a younger woman and they're walking down this path <laughs> towards this door i'm gonna cry you guys <laughs> sorry towards this door that's like glowing and happy and so like it's no coincidence that i used this deck um to get that message so that's why I found this spread so helpful. Anyway, so getting all that out there. Now, that's the point of this spread. So I don't know what your issue is, Joe. Thank you guys so much for your support. <laughs> no, we don't need Pirate Mary. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, okay, so going back to Joe, this spread, it'll be a this, not that. So I'm not sure, like I have no idea what's going on in your life. We are recent Facebook acquaintances and I love what you post, but that's pretty much all I know about you. We met in the fellow Latter-day Lesbian podcast group. So everybody that's new, go listen to that podcast or Sleepy Shorts. Awesome. Okay, so... Joe, what should you be focusing on and what should you not? What message do you need versus how you've been misinterpreting that? Or how can we reframe this into a better, more helpful perspective? Oh, hey! Okay, er Erlen or Erlen? I want to say Erlen for some reason, um, but for some reason I feel like it's Erlen. Let me know, <laughs> but I'm happy you're here. Um, okay, no, I'm not going to cry. Um, hopefully I won't share anymore. Um, personal. This is about you guys. Okay, so Erlen and anyone else, um, I'm doing this two-card spread for Joe right now, but um, sounds like Berlin. Okay. Okay, so it is Erlen. 
Okay, that's what I, I thought I had. Yeah, okay. Got it. I should have known that because, like, we actually, like, text and stuff. So I should probably have known that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I told you I am really bad with names. So, anyway, I'm doing this for Joe. But if you want um, either the animal spirit reading or um, the synchronicity dice roll, um, just let me know. Just comment what you want, and I will get to you after Joe. Okay. I'm really doing this for real now, Joe. Not getting distracted. So, this is for Joe. <sighs> Perspective on life. This, not that. Okay, this, not that. Got it. So your this card is the Ace of Wands. Awesome, this is a great card to get. Let's see, versus. So we have this card versus the Six of Pentacles. Interesting. Okay, so this, not that that. Now let's explain what these mean. So the ace of wands is, you know what, I better, where's the book? I don't like people to just have to take my word for it. So I like to read what each book has to say about the cards. But so the eight, so the suit of wands has to, it correlates with the element of fire, passion, so wands are all about drive, energy, passion, the things that make us do stuff, motivation. It can have to do with sexual energy, you know, just basically energy, life force. So that's what the suit of wands is about, and it correlates with fire. So you can kind of see the correlation there, maybe, if you want to. Um, but this says the ace of wands. Okay, I'll, I will say the ace... It goes ace through 10 of every suit. And the ace is the first one. And so the aces of every suit are like a blessing, a new, like an, an opportunity for a fresh beginning, you know? Because that's the, that's the beauty of tarot as opposed to like oracle cards is that there's a structure within tarot. Um, so it goes ace through 10 and it's like, and going through the, the 22 major arcana cards it's it's like a journey it's called the fool's journey and these are all archetypes that we would that we would typically go through just through life um in in regards to specific things obviously so we have the ace of wands which means like a brand new fiery opportunity maybe a brand new idea has like popped into your mind or this is a brand new opportunity for something that you're going to be really passionate about. I'll read what it says now. This wand is an offering bearing the gifts of passion, creativity, vitality, and adventure. It is the torch you need to bring more fire into your life. I love that. More heat and more light. The power in this wand is yours for the taking. All you need to do is open your eyes and your heart to it. Often the gift of this card appears as a small spark of inspiration. So if you have a new idea or dream bubbling up within you, honor it by taking an action step. Otherwise, this gift comes through as an outside invitation or opportunity. Say yes. Take impassioned action and be bold. The Ace of, Wine, the Ace of Wands offers you the potential to grow something from a place of pure creativity. But remember, you must continue to tend to the seed it offers in order for it to thrive. So that's a really great perspective to have towards life. So let's see what's throwing you off from that. We have the Six of Pentacles. The Suit of Pentacles revert, um, relates to the Suit of Earth. Earth is about the, like, the worldly matters, like finances and health and things you can touch with your five senses or with your hands. Um, so it's like very practical energy, um, earth energy. So the six of pentacles relates to um, giving and taking, um, kind of 
both sides of that equation, um, but um, specifically in relation to like some type of material resource usually. But I will read you what it says about that and then we'll talk about it. As if from nowhere, blessings rain down from the sky and into the hands of people in need. Hands outstretched, the people accept these gifts graciously and eagerly. With a prayer of gratitude and thanks, they will pull these gifts to good they were they will put these gifts to good use and return the favor to others when they are able. The Six of Pentacles encourages you to give when you can and receive when you're in need. If you are in a position to lend a hand to others, give what you're able to without expectations or agenda. If someone is offering an unexpected blessing or gift to you, ex graciously graciously accept if you are truly in need. Through selfless sharing, we find a divine balance. This card could also speak to a lack of balance. If you feel you are constantly on the giving or receiving end in the sum aspect of your life, it could be time to reassess your position. So, it seems like you might be giving your power away. That's kind of what I'm getting. Um, in a way that maybe you're not you're probably conscious of it on some level. Um, yeah, I feel like you're probably giving your power away or being too generous when you're not getting as much back because this Ace of Wands, it, like reframing, it's saying that you have what you need on your own. You have that fire, you have that spark of creativity, you have that life essence all on your own. And this is like an opportunity, like it's a brand, like you have the opportunity to use this with a fresh start, with a fresh perspective, with whatever you need. The Ace of Wands is basically telling you that you don't need anybody else. And the Six of Pentacles, or at least in relation to whatever this thing is in your life, whatever that needs reframing. Um, so I feel like you've been giving your power away and maybe because you're afraid that you don't have what it takes on your own, but it, like that is not, this is the not card. So this standing in your own power and knowing that you have what you need on your own and not this giving your power away or thinking that you need something from other people that you clearly don't need so the universe wants you to know that you are this not this so i hope that made sense thank you joe hopefully that made some sense that's my this or that spread for you. <laughs> Be the Ace of Wands, not the Six of Pentacles. Not that there's anything wrong with that, just not right now. Okay, who is next? I'm trying to catch up here. Okay, Brandon. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You lost your fiance. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. I'm so sorry to hear that. See more. Sorry, I'm trying to read your whole comment. It's my mother and grandmother in the past four years. It feels like everyone moving on with, oh. Okay. Okay, Brandon, let's do a this or that spread for you. Joe, jo, you are basically Harry Potter, yes. Okay, yeah, I'll do Brandon. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sarah. I'm so, you're a fellow LDL listener too. I'm so excited. Like, all these people that, like, I'm finding my tribe and I love it. Okay, so this is for Brandon. I'm so sorry, Brandon. You are going through such a rough time, and I can definitely understand why you'd want guidance. And if you ever want a more in-depth reading from me, feel free to message me or DM me. Um, and we can go into it deeper if you want. But right now, we'll do this or that spread. And anybody else, feel free to tell me what you want after Brandon. 
so right now this is from Brandon what he should be Brandon were you here for the explanation of the this or that um, I'm basically going to be telling you what the universe wants you to know versus what you're focusing on pretty much so this is for Brandon and let's hope that it gives him some peace and comfort and clarity so this is for Brandon okay this not that Okay, Brandon, for your this, we have the Four of Pentacles. Not bad, not bad. And then we have not the Three of Pentacles. Interesting. Interesting. That's very rare that um, they would come up, the Three and the Four of Pentacles of like the same suit right next to each other. So let's dive into that. So the suit of pentacles, like I said, um, is about earth. It's about practical matters, those things that we can touch, our health, our wealth, our finances, um, earthly possessions, the, those types of things, practical things. The four of pentacles, I have a version of this deck that's um, it's called the Naked Heart Tarot. I love it. Um, and in that deck, this card is a squirrel. And so I always think of the squirrel when I think of the Four of Pentacles. This card doesn't really do much to, to, to describe what it means. <laughs> so I'll just tell you. Um, so in this, I like the squirrel depiction because it's like there's four pentacles, right? And he's just a little squirrel. And so he's got like four, like two in his arms and then he's got like, like he's got two more that he's trying to hold on to down here and it's just adorable because he's a squirrel and he can't go anywhere <laughs> because he's got four pentacles that are all so valuable to him and he doesn't want to let one go and that's usually what I would associate with the four pentacles but I will read what it says here a person meditates in the space beyond time and earth through expertly focusing her energy, she maintains her position while holding the surrounding pentacles in place. While this is an ad admirable, admirable pursuit with some definite benefits, it leaves little time for anything else. Without alignment, without precise focus, the pentacles will fall out of alignment, and she fears this would disrupt her state of peace. Her unwavering commitment to maintaining stability keeps her locked into her practice, and it, um, and it also keeps her from experiencing much else. The Four of Pentacles com commends your discipline, but asks you not to take it too far. You are encouraged to loosen your grip on anything you're holding too tightly. It might be your finances, your daily routine, or your diet. It could be your spiritual practice or your job. Sometimes you need to be flexible with your rules in order to truly enjoy what you have. What is the point of accumulating wealth and stability if you can't bring yourself to enjoy any of it? It's time to find a healthy balance between discipline and flow. So that's kind of like why I love the squirrel <laughs> depiction so much because he has this stuff and it is valuable stuff but focusing so much on having to carry all of them is gonna keep him stuck because he's just a little squirrel and he cannot move with those four big pentacles. And I also think of Cinderella, the classic Disney, Gus Gus, when he is like trying to gather all the little corn kernels and like Lucifer is like off in the distance and then Lucifer comes and he's like, oh no, and he's got this big stack of corn kernels and then they all go everywhere. <laughs> and then he's trying to gather them all up and that's when Lucifer get, comes and it's a big debacle. We don't want debacles like that. <laughs> we, want, we want Gus Gus to be safe from Lucifer. By the way, I'm just now putting together Lucifer. I hope Mary and Shelly are still in here because Mary is, or Shelly is the best Lucifer ever. You guys, nobody will know unless you listen to Latter-day Lesbian. Anyway, Shelly's an awesome Lucifer. Okay, back to Brandon and the Four of Pentacles. So, 
you're trying so hard and that is so clear from this. I can feel how much you're trying to be stable. Um, so let's go to the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles, this is interesting. So with this one, I usually associate it with ants. <laughs> um, like this, or or bees, maybe. Um, but that worker energy, <laughs> thanks Shelly, I don't need it right now. But I'll let you know if I do. Um, so the Three of Pentacles is more like those insects that work together and they're like always working. But they're only working and being successful because they're working together. And they get so much done because of their coming together. And it's interesting. Well, I'll read to you what it says in here. It says, three broken pieces in separate hands come together to create a whole. Each individual piece is beautiful alone, but still just a shard of something greater. Together, the whole picture appears. What was once beautiful but unclear now forms a perfectly unified shape and purpose. The Three of Pentacles encourages you to seek guidance, talent, or expertise outside of yourself. The skills you possess are beautiful on their own and they will only be enhanced by the complementary skills of others. This card speaks to the power of teamwork and unison. Recognize your strengths and the strengths of others at this time. Be honest about where you may need, may need help and where you may be able to help others as well. Okay, so now I'm getting a very clear picture what I think the universe wants you. And this is like, it's like, like I can't tell you how weird or how rare it is for these two cards to come up right next to each other. Like in any suit, any card, like there's 78 cards and like you saw me shuffling them, right? So it's just not likely. But it's like you're so close um, and the universe is telling you, you don't need anyone outside of yourself. So this is the not card, the not that. This, the four of pentacles, like you should be focusing on what you do have. You should be grateful for those four pentacles that you have that are keeping you balanced right now. Um, because she is beautifully aligned. Look at that. Like she is, in this depiction, she is not that squirrel. She is stable. So she's not stuck in this interpretation. She's stable. And I think the universe is, t is trying to get you to focus on you do have this stability, even though you might feel like you need somebody or other people outside of you. And it, I can't imagine how hard it would be because it's, it's like it's telling you not to focus so much on your lack of, of what you've lost. Um, like three broken, three broken pieces of something. I'm kind of focusing more on the, de the depictions in these cards because I'm feeling like that's more appropriate for what you're going through. It's like you're so close to almost being stable and it's telling you, you have everything you need and you don't, as hard and painful as it is to have have lost those really important people. And I think you might have mentioned three different people, if I remember correctly. That could be what this is focusing on. And it would make sense because it is the suit of pentacles, the suit of life, like earth, life on earth. So it could, this could be referring to those losses. And the universe is saying, they, they, those were beautiful. And they still are beautiful. They are still with you. Like, they don't just disappear when they die. I, I truly believe that. I believe that the people we love stick around as our spirit guides. Most of our spirit guides are our ancestors, the people that we have had really close connections with. And I think it's telling you that they, that while they were so beautiful and they served such a great purpose in your life, that you can be stable on your own and that not focusing so much on your loss will help you realize that you have more than you did before. Or not necessarily more, but you have more in a different way. 
like you have the opportunity for abundance and to be stable and okay, if that makes any sense. So yeah, everybody send love to Brandon. I'm so, what did you say? I'm going to read it now. Learn to let go. and Yeah. Yeah. Focus and trying for your children. That's exactly all you can do. This is what I tell everybody. It's like one of my mantras. As long as you are doing your best, that is all you can do. <laughs> and you can rest easy knowing that you're doing your best. What more can you do? There's no point in guilt and shame, anxiety, all those useless. They're a waste of energy as hard as it is to get out of them and as easy it is to get stuck in them. They don't really do anything for us. Um, they're kind of just a waste because you can't change anything if you're doing your best. So yeah, totally feel free to DM me if you want to like go deeper into how to focus on letting go a little more. But it sounds like from the cards, like you're close because like it wouldn't show up the three and the four, like if you weren't close to that. So I hope that brings you some comfort that you're almost there. So hopefully that helps. Yes. Fuck guilt and shame. Yes. And anxiety. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Did we have somebody after Brandon? Going through, going through. That's totally cool, Sarah. Thank you for checking in. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad that you came. It's fun to have the fellow LDLers here. Okay, um, somebody needs to tell me what they want. Erlin, do you want the dice synchronicity oracle do you want the this or that tarot spread or the animal spirit all very enticing oh i should take a drink this is good time i'm so glad i'm so glad that helped i can't imagine how hard it would be so i'm glad that anything could help honestly Okay, Shelly, yeah, let's do it. This or that. Erlin, please tell me what you want and I'll do that next. And every anyone else watching, just tell me what you want and I'll catch up to you. So right now we are doing this or that for Shelly. She kind of got cheated out of her synchronicity or called because she only got, she, I rolled the one. She only got the one card. But it was a good card. Thank you for coming, Joe. So glad. So glad you got something. Thank you for watching. Erlin, it's totally up to you. You pick. I can just roll the dice for you if you want. Okay, I'll just roll the dice for you, Erlin. I'll do that after the this or that spread for Shelly. Hi, Jason. Yeah, it's okay. I was waiting for you. It's okay. So let me know. Um, I think you wanted um, a tarot, but I also am doing oracle readings. So if you want one of those instead, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just do the this or that for you. So... So I will do the this or that for Shelly, then I'll do the oracle for Erlin, and then I will do this or that for Jason. Okay, Shelly. What, what the universe wants you to be focusing on versus what you should not be focusing on or how to reframe the perspective. I try not to say shoulds, but I catch myself sometimes. Okay, for Shelly. This or that. This, not that. 
Okay, Shelly. This, we have the Page of Cups. This is one of my favorite cards. So, okay, I have to explain to you court cards now. Every suit has, don't be mad because this is, okay, because this is kind of a hierarchical thing and they do use genders, but the genders are totally just, you can just throw them out. They can be any gender. So it goes page, um, page, knight, queen, king but anybody can be any of them. Usually the page is depicted as a woman and the knight is is one is a card of action, so it's usually men, and then the queens and the kings, obviously, but any, anyone can be anything. So, Shelly, the page of cups, the cups, the suit of cups is awesome. It's the suit of water, obviously, or maybe not, obviously, but water contains, or cups contain water. So it's about emotions and intuition and romance and feelings. And it totally makes sense that the Page of Cups would come up for you because you're still kind of in like a new phase of your life where you've recently figured out like that you have this new identity um, as opposed to what you were used to. I will say this card almost always comes up as for me. Like anytime I have, I do a reading for myself or I am involved in a reading, the Page of Cups always comes up. It's like this person that is, so the page is technically like the lowest of the court cards, but it also like can signify like a call to action of that suit. So let's just look at what your not that card is the queen of cups <laughs> okay Shelly I'm just gonna be blunt here but the universe is telling you you've got some you got some work to do still <laughs> you're not completely there with your emotions or you're where you went you're not quite where you have the potential to be in terms of understanding your own emotions. The Queen of Cups is the person in the whole deck that signifies that she's in total control. The Queen energy is more of like this internal energy, whereas the King is more external and like applying that to, to other people. The Queen is more contained and the Queen of Cups, especially is usually like very graceful and poised, you know, she doesn't have to be, but she's just very, um, she's just so in tune with herself that she's not unstable. She's not anything. She's very stable, maybe quiet. Sometimes that's just like kind of a stereotype. Let's see what this book says about it. Just so you don't take my word for it. The queen of cups. So yeah, she's a mermaid here. A mermaid sits atop her island rock, peacefully connecting to herself and the spirits around her. She is an ageless creature with the wisdom of many lives lived. Magic is threaded throughout her entire being. It is not just something she does, but more who she is. She gently holds a bowl of ocean water, using it to scry and connect with her intuition. The Queen of Cups invites you to connect deeply with yourself and your surroundings. This is a time to be compassionate and understanding with yourself and others. Call on your inner wisdom to guide you forward with love and empathy, trusting in the deepest knowing of your heart. Let your intuition be your guide and your soul be your compass. That makes a lot of sense based on, like, it's kind of, I feel like I'm cheating, like, knowing you from your podcast and, like, because you're so open and you've shared so much. And it kind of makes sense that you're not quite there with, being compassionate with yourself. You have so much compassion for other people. And I think that might be what the universe is trying to like shift your, it's shifting your um, perspective a little bit. So I'll read you what you should, or not the should. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I can't, uh, I can't should all over myself. So how you, sh how you should, ah, I said it again. <laughs> 
what the universe wants you to know more clearly. The Page of Cups. A child stands at the edge of the ocean, a cup of magic dust flowing naturally from their hand. The magic is so innate and heartfelt, and other creatures of magic are drawn to its purity. In the distance, a mermaid appears, curious to see who wields such a beautiful and natural power. Maybe it's that queen. In the distance, okay. The child is delighted, but not surprised to see the mermaid, believing that magic is all around and available to everyone. They watch each other, smiling from afar, admiring each other without expectations. The Page of Cups invites you to connect with your innate magic and creativity. In order to do this, you must release the attachment you have to doing things in your usual way or having specific expectations. Let go of what human life has taught you and connect with the purity of your spirit. Be open-minded, and that's when magic will come through you unexpectedly. The Page of Cups may embody a part of you or another person in your life. It will depend on your reading what makes sense for you. Yeah, so <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So um, it's telling you that you need to be focusing on giving yourself some compassion because you hold so much space for other people that you don't give yourself enough space. <laughs> I'm so glad that this is making sense because this would be embarrassing if it didn't. Um, yes. <laughs> so, so um, it's telling the universe wants you to know that you have this potential to to get there to this space where you truly are at peace with yourself, but you're not there yet, and you really can take time focusing on just like that childlike spirit and I can't believe that it brought up the like letting go of what you've been taught that's literally your entire podcast so um I guess it's just pointing out that you still have some of those self-deprecating attitudes and anxiety that is directly from the church probably still or your marriage or whatever um that's carrying over and you've come such a long way Again, what are the chances, guys? Like, this doesn't happen. The page and the queen. Like, there's only one card in between these, which is the knight. So, and the knight is about action, taking action. So, if you want to get to this place of really being the queen, where you really are in control of yourself and your emotions, and you're really in tune with your emotions, and you're compassionate, um... So if you, if you just take a little action towards putting a little focus towards your own self-compassion, then it will probably happen quickly. And like, you're not that far. <laughs> so there's your this or that, Shelly. Sorry, I kind of called you out, <laughs> but you asked for it. <laughs> okay, so now it was Erlen next with the Oracle. This will be fun. So Erlen, I am going to roll this dice and these cards have a bunch of different archetypes, messages, and we are going to see how many cards to pull based on the card, the dice number. And um, that will, will make sense of what cards come out for you. So rolling the dice, three, number three. So. I will pull three cards for Erlen, and we'll see what comes up and how to make sense of it. This is for Erlen. And shout out to Erlen because she is such a good person. You're such a good friend. You've totally been there for me, so thank you. Like, this is the least I can do for you. Three cards for Erlen. I hope these really can help bring a positive message. And I'm pretty sure they will because you're in a very good direction. You've got a good trajectory going. So this is for Erlen. Three cards. Okay, first card. Girl, we got resilience. Yes, 
you know that this is you right now, right? Like that should be obvious. Second card, change up. Girl, yes, this is so exciting. And the third card, imagination. Yes, this is great. I love that these cards, I love these cards came up for you. I mean, they speak, again, I feel like I'm cheating because I kind of know your situation. And I'm not gonna like tell people what's going on with you, but you are being so resilient going through these really hard changes. But look at how beautiful this change card is. I just love it. Like the butterfly symbolize changing and growing. And the imagination, like that being the final card that came up, like the sky is the limit for you, girl. Like we were just talking about um, like the direction you want to go and like with your profession. And it's basically just confirming like as whatever you can imagine, you got this. Like pay attention to your imagination. Use your imagination and don't let anything stop you. Not that it would because change and resilience. I mean, it, this is just the universe confirming to you that you are you're on the right path. And I, like I said, I already like before I pulled the cards, you're on a great trajectory and this is literally I couldn't think of a better confirmation of that. So, that was pretty easy. There you go, Erlen. Hope you liked it. Loved it. Good. Good. Okay, Jason. We have the this or that with the tarot. And um, I don't know. Has anybody gone after Jason yet? Anybody? It's free. Um, Jason, I am using the Starseeker Tarot today. Goodness. It's, um, a rather, it's a semi-new one from Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, I'm using that. Um, I have so many though. Like, I, I'm gonna have to put a video up on my YouTube channel of just, um, Oh, you go by Tyler. My bad. Tyler. Sorry. <laughs> Again, I'm so bad at names. How does this... Okay, so this or that is basically... I'm going to try to do this without saying the word should, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> yes, Mary. I will totally do do that after Tyler. Yes. Um. So, Tyler, the this or that is... Basically, this spread that I'm that I came up with myself that I'm trying to like flesh out, um, work with. It's worked a lot for me with some important issues. It's basically what the universe wants you to know versus how you might be misinterpreting it. So the this card will be this is um, this is your focus, and the that not that card is gonna be how you might be being how where your focus might be being misled or it's just a way to reframe what you are thinking to a more positive framework or a more positive perspective and yeah it should make sense as we as we go so this is for Tyler this is a this or that so what kind of perspective does Tyler need right now. Either this or that. I've been saying this or that. It's this, not that. My bad. This, not that. If I could shuffle, that would help. And just, I am not doing reversals. Um, you were asking about tarot, so I, and I, you mentioned you like tarot. I don't know um, if anybody knows about reversals, but I am not using those tonight. 
just because I'm not, <laughs> just because when it's simple with just two cards, you don't really need the extra nuance of reversals. So I'm just doing upright positions. So Tyler, this, not that. This, not that. And anybody, um, I'm doing Mary after this, but this or that, but anybody feel free to put down what you want right now so that I know who to do after Mary. Okay, Tyler, this, not that. The this, we have the seven of wands, oh boy. And the that, not that, we have the nine of cups. Whoops, okay, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> Sorry, this is another, I feel so awkward when I do tarot reading, like when I have to like call people out like this. But I mean, I'm just telling you what the cards say, what the universe, I'm, I'm the messenger, don't hate the messenger. Okay, so the nine of cups is the wish card. The nine of cups is literally like, just look at it. It just exudes positive energy. The nines in most of the suits represent like really good things because it's like really close to the 10. <laughs> okay, I'm laying it on you. So, so the nine of cups is that wish card, wish fulfillment. It's usually like this smug guy like sitting with like a bunch of cups around him and he's like look at all my cups that I have and I'm sitting in front of them and I guess this is kind of a gentler way this this lady is not so smug about her cups so that's the not card the this card is the seven of wands and let me tell you I love this card a lot of people might not because it can mean confrontation but I am a very fiery person. I'm Sag, Leo, Aries, my, my big three. <laughs> I am all fire, basically. So I love wands, and wands correlate to fire. Um, so yes, those passions, the motivation, that energy, life force. And the seven of wands is, is this like defense, that's defending yourself, defending defending what's important to you. This is this is what the universe is wanting you to focus on. So with the, this, not that, I'm kind of getting the sense that you might, you might not be defending something that you know that you should be, or hmm. maybe you don't know, but I'm telling you, <laughs> or the universe is, that there's something that you should be standing up for. Um, there's something that you should be defending, whether it's your beliefs, whether it's somebody you love, whether it's yourself, just standing up for yourself. Um, I can read this just so you don't have to take it from me, but it's pretty clear. So I'll just do the keywords. So for the nine of cups, we have good fortune, emotional fulfillment, wishes come true and happiness. And then with the seven of wands, I can find the wands, which I can't apparently. Here they are, wands. Okay. So the key words of this are power, individuality, authenticity, and standing up for yourself. Yes. This is like, mm -hmm. I, I actually, this is like my card, I would say, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I very much have learned to do this. In, I almost have overcompensated in this because I didn't have a voice for so long and I did not know how to stand up for myself. And then once I did, I'm like, bitches, you better be ready. <laughs> like, I am not taking it anymore. And I think that's really good for me in a lot of ways, but it, all, it can also be destructive. Just like fire itself. Like, these torches can be either used to light the way and show you light and give you warmth and they can also get out of hand my garage just caught fire the other day <laughs> can't make these things up 
just because my dad started the grill and something sparked somewhere and it started our whole garage on fire. So he went from using the fire to start the grill to cook food and have something amazing to eat. And it went to our garage burning down. <laughs> so that's the danger. I just have to warn you of the danger of fire and playing with fire. And this card is kind of all about that. You have to kind of know where your own boundary is with, um, with however you are going to defend yourself. Like it's 100% okay to have your boundaries and to set them. Just don't, just don't be too fiery. Don't, don't burn people in standing up for yourself. Just be, just have boundaries. So you're in kind of a fantasy state of mind right now where you're kind of, I get the feeling of like cognitive dissonance where you kind of feel like, you know, in the back of your head, you probably should be sticking up for something that is important to you and you're just not. And this is like encouragement from the universe to, you have permission to stand up for yourself and you should, and you should set boundaries and just don't hurt people with them. Seven of Wands is amazing because you should set boundaries. Boundaries are so important. And coming from a cult, like it is so important to learn how to set boundaries and it can be difficult, but totally worth it. So hope that made sense, Jason. Resonates with you a lot because you've been working on being empowered in your, yes. My, I'm Leo Moon too, yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. You can talk to me about this more in depth. I, I haven't, I can't read, I can't see your whole message right now, but I will. And feel free to talk to me about anything Leo Moon because boy, I am a Leo Moon. Okay, so moving on to Mary's this or that. Gosh, shuffle. I'm excited, this is exciting to like do readings for people that I kind of know things about like just through your podcast and stuff like it's cool to see how things correlate and like the new friends that I've been making lately Scorpio Sun oh gosh that's gotta be hard ah I'm like my I couldn't even hide my reaction my facial reaction okay Mary's this or that this not that Gosh darn it. This, not that. Okay. Mary. The perspective. Focusing on this, not that. Mary. Okay. This, not that. Okay, Mary, for your this. The moon. Oh, look at that. Another synchronicity, Mary. <laughs> so this is our first major arcana card, I believe, that has come up. And it happens to be one of my favorites. And there's dogs on it, you guys. Yeah. So this card is actually really cool. This is the, um, this tapestry is the um the writer Waite Smith the the standard edition of tarot this is like a version of that and I love it because it has the wolf the domesticated dog and this lobster down here sorry if you can't really see and to me and it's the moon is all about the unconscious it's the subconscious, the things we cannot see. Let's, okay, so that was your this. Now we're gonna do not that, not the two of wands, okay. Okay, Mary, it's your turn to be called out a little bit, sorry. Yes, Erlen, I will totally do this, or this not that for you after this one. So Mary, the two of wands is about planning 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 looking into the future like you can kind of tell from this depiction she's thinking about something you know 
And again, the suit of wands is about inspiration, creativity, those ideas. It's like you're constantly, and from the podcast, I'm not even caught up yet, but you're constantly like bubbling with new ideas and ways to like make the podcast fun or different, um, all your little, um, the songs and the, the tunes and everything. You're always looking for ways to make it like, to like just use your creativity. But what you might want to be focusing on instead at this moment is more of getting in tune with some some things going on in your subconscious that you need to kind of look at. So obviously there's a star card and there's a sun card and there's a moon card. And the moon obviously is compared to those is going to be the one that you focus on things back up a little bit. This is the card of cancer. So the astrolo the astrological sign of cancer. Cancers are very nurturing. It's that water. It's cancer is the ultimate water sign. And like I said in Shelley's reading about cups, the moon is like the ruler of the cups. It's the ruler of all things flowy, of all I mean, if you think about real life, that's exactly what it does. The, ru the moon rules our bodies. Our bodies are like 65% water or whatever. And our body is literally ruled by the moon just the way our, our oceans and tides are ruled by the moon. And gravity and all those laws that are kind of mysterious, but they're mm. always at, at play. So the universe might be asking you to think about something that might be kind of like a monkey on your back almost. That is kind of something that's like bothering you and maybe you can't figure out quite what it is, but there's something that you need to be, that you need to shine the light on. So it, so it could mean like looking at like your shadow aspects a lot of the time, and by shadow, I mean, like when we talk about doing shadow work and like the spirituality community, we talk about just mm -hmm. shining light on your weaknesses and your insecurities so that the more, the more light is sh shod, shed, shed on them, on things, <laughs> sorry, my brain is bright. But the more light, obviously, that is shed onto things, the more clear they become. So the longer and the more things you have in your subconscious, just chilling in the dark, they're still at play. They're still, like your subconscious still has a big part of you. And I was pointing this out because I think that the lobster is more of that like reptilian brain, like our id the wolf is more of like our instincts, like the ego, whereas the domesticated dog is like our super ego, if you want to like go really deep into it. So it could be any of those things, anything relating to any of those things. Um, yeah, just I'm, I'm just getting the sense that there's like something weighing on you. And instead of trying to just like think it away, like you might have been successful in the past by just focusing on other things, putting all your energy into the podcast or whatever creative outlet you're that you have been putting it into and constantly thinking because this is the ultimate planning card and focusing more on just sitting with yourself and and thinking, what's bothering me? Something is bothering me and I can't quite put my finger on it. Or maybe you know what it is, but sit with it. Like, because the more you sit with it, the more light you're bringing to it by your conscious awareness. You're bringing it out of the darkness of your subconscious into the light of your conscious mind. So the more you sit with it in your consciousness, the, the clearer it usually becomes. So instead of like just making yourself really busy trying not to think about it, you can just sit with it for a little bit and you'd be surprised at how much how quickly that thing will stop bothering you once you start focusing on it, just sitting with it rather than trying to think it away. 
So there you go, Mary. This, not that. This, not that. Sit with your emotions, what's bothering you. Not try to think them away or distract yourself. Whew. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. That was the first major arcana card, so that was exciting. Moon is my favorite card, or one of them. I know, Mary. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Like I said in the beginning, it's kind of your turn to be called out because I can tell that from the podcast, like, like I was saying. So if I can sense it just from listening, then it's probably true. <laughs> Yes. Yes, no problem. I hope that something comes out of that and makes sense for you. I'm so honored you guys came to my live party and participated with me. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Okay, did we have somebody after Mary? I feel like I did. Oh, Erlen wanted a this, not that, right? Is that what I have next? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I am doing Erlen's This Not That reading, but I don't think I have anything else lined up yet. So comment now or while I'm doing this if you want and tell me what you want. If you want the This Not That tarot, we haven't done an animal spirit reading yet. And we also have the synchronicity dice oracle. So just comment what you want and I will get to you. Right now we're doing Erlin's This Not That. <sighs> okay. What should Erlin focus on? How should she frame her perspective right now? In the most beneficial way possible. Okay, Erlen, this, not that. So for your this, what do you know? You guys, you guys watch me shuffle, right? Like, cause you, yeah. Anyway, we have the moon. What do you know? Synchronicity is abound tonight, you guys. So, and you're not, that is the king of wands. Wow, that is powerful. Whew. So, you got a major and a court card. So, whenever I see a major arcana card, I think major life lesson <laughs> versus um, the, the, what do they call it? the other cards, the other 54 cards in the deck, <laughs> the ace through 10, whatever, pips. Um, there's a word that I just cannot think of right now. But anyway, those cards, minor, minors, the major versus minor. My brain is so fried, you guys. <laughs> okay, so you got a major lesson, okay? I am going to read what it says about the king of wands. Were you here? Um, when we talked about the court cards, I'll just do it again. So it goes page, knight, queen, king. And again, there's no gender assigned. So like, yes, you are, you can be a king as a woman. Like it does not matter, the gender. It's just kind of this hierarchy so that we can understand it. So, or the expression of that suit. So it goes page, knight, queen, king. So the king is the highest expression of the suit. So in this case, the suit of wands, which is very high energy, very. And the king being the highest expression of the suit is very much externally focused. He's focusing that energy externally versus the queen who is more in tune with herself and focusing that energy inward. And the knights are about taking action and movement towards the fulfillment of that suit. And the page is just like the, the most pure 
um, most innocent expression of it, essentially. So you came up with the King of Wands as your not that card. So I'll just go ahead and read what it says. Oh, I found it right away. It says, the King of Wands is a person of both passion and restraint. As a leader, he must make wise decisions for all based on experience and logic. As a person, he favors instinct and impulse over calculated reasoning. He is someone who finds the balance between both in order to lead with both passion and reason. The King of Wands invites you to be wise, but not to the point of sacrificing your desires. There must be a balance between following your instincts and being responsible. Joy and pleasure must mix with obligation and logic. To be a confident leader, it helps to love and believe in the message you are sharing. Make sure that what you stand for is truly authentic to you. That is where you will find your confidence and authority. <sighs> okay, so I can totally see how that could apply to you as a personality because like we're talking about Marsha Linehan and the lady you brought up about the highly sensitive person and these people that make big changes because they see the need for them and they felt and experienced the need for them so they make those changes happen. And we've literally been talking about how you are, you're figuring out like how you want to make those changes. And the universe is kind of just telling you to step back for a second because you've still got some healing to do. This moon card, like, um, uh, like I just explained it with Mary, <laughs> you know, like there's something still bothering you. There's something that still needs healing. There's something you still need to sit with to really heal to before, like you gotta, you gotta walk before you can run. So before you can become this, which you totally will, it's just not your role in life right now in this moment. It totally will be like the sooner that you sit with all the things that are bothering you that are at force that are still controlling you somehow that aren't necessarily for your best and most positive alignment. You still have to like do that healing work and sit with that stuff and then the universe will be like then it'll be time for you to focus on this. So like <laughs> I don't mean to like burst any bubbles or anything but the universe is just saying you you got this you can totally be this just not yet you need to f keep focusing on yourself and your healing and that is what needs to be the priority in your life right now and then you're gonna be the most kick-ass king of wands in the fucking world so yeah so that was Erlen's This Not That reading. Big lessons. I mean, yes, I mean, you are going through big lessons right now. We know that. These are big lessons and they're gonna make big changes once you sit with them and once you heal. It's gonna be big changes. You're gonna be able to help so many other people by exerting that energy outwards once you're there. Okay, what was next? Do we have anyone next? Or is that it? This is the last call, people. I'm totally willing to stay here as long as anybody's willing. Um, again, ask me anything <laughs> if you want. Or you can always feel free to DM me if you have questions. But yeah, I just, last call. You are so welcome. You're so welcome, Arlen. I'm reading Mary right now. So sometime on the something she went through made her feel oh I like that like processing emotions you know that is something that in the church 
we are taught not to do. I'm sorry, it really is. It's we're taught that if you if you don't feel good, if you don't feel happy, if you don't feel positive, then it's not good. You're obviously not doing what you should be doing if you're not happy or if you're angry. You shouldn't be angry because how can spirit dwell with you when you're angry? Ugh, it just drives me crazy because it's so toxic. It's such a toxic message. And we all learn it. We're all brainwashed through it. Either you feel the spirit or you feel good and you're on the right path or you feel bad because you're a sinner and you're not doing what you should be doing. And that's so false. And I think we know that now, but it is a skill. It takes time and practice to, first of all, to be able to identify a feeling, like to recognize something and then to like, even just to put a name on it, that can be a huge first step. Just being able to name what you're feeling in any given moment, that's a skill. But it's totally learnable, totally. So yeah, I am totally up for that exercise. That would be awesome. We all need that. Yep, we don't get to. She's great at feeling things though, so. Yes, yes, like we do feel these things so strongly, but we're just told they don't matter. <laughs> so, I mean, I totally understand. Like I literally developed a personality disorder from never having any validation for any feeling that I expressed. I was just seeking attention if I expressed a feeling, let alone a feeling of like hurt or pain or like that really offended me. Like, nope, there's no room for that. <laughs> and it sucks, but we can recover. Yes, she fought battles for her empathy. That's so true. And I think that, yes, that's so applicable to all of us, all human beings. Empathy comes from having that experience, you know, knowing what somebody is going through. So for sure, for sure. Well, if that's it, last call, any lurkers here that haven't said anything, if you want a reading, I would love to give you one. Or if you have any questions, this is literally it. Ask me anything. But if you don't want to, that's cool. You can always message me privately if you would like. And I'll probably start doing these probably weekly. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to get my own YouTube channel up and just like have a place for these videos to go afterwards. And um, I might make some standalone videos about things. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do it. Spirit animal. So, this is an oracle deck. It consists of the different elements. So fire, they split it up into five elements. It's fire, water, earth, air, and I think they call it like ether. Let me see. But that's like kind of like the highest of all. They call it spirit. Ether, spirit, that the stuff in between all the matter, all the elements. Okay, bring it. So I really like this. Um, my puppy chewed, chewed it up. It makes me so sad. <laughs> anyway, I really like this book because it kind of has an order to the animals in each of the elements so you can kind of get a feel for like where you're kind of at and where you kind of versus where you could be within that whatever suit that comes up so anyway it'll be clearer <laughs> once I pull a card so this is Shelly's animal spirit right now I'm not saying this is like in general but right now, the spirit animal that is 
being shown through you or being exemplified by you is it is the turtle Aww. this is a good one I like the turtle okay this is a water one I believe let's find it Okay, so yeah, this is a water. I'll just list the other animals in this suit um, so you kind of get a feel for where it is in the hierarchy. It goes crocodile, stingray, fish, starfish, octopus, beaver, oyster, turtle. Just so you know. <laughs> okay, this is what it says. The keywords for this are an ancient soul, grounded, trusting, and at home in the self. Okay, already this is um, doubling up on your Page of Cups versus the Queen of Cups reading. It is, a one, it is wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality. Like the beaver, the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously. This helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life, no matter where their travels lead them. Turtle energy is behind all great writers and storytellers as they collect life experiences under their shells for later use. Shelly, shell. <laughs> The most potent turtle energy helps us close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. Shelly, that's perfect for you. I love it. Thank you so much, Erlen. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I'm glad that you got to participate. All right, Shelly. Shelly and her show. When in balance, this is peaceful, adventurous, and productive. That totally sounds like you from what I know from the podcast. When out of balance, slows down to a halt and to bring into balance an adventure. So yeah, that's kind of where you're, where you're at right now in terms of your energy. You're in that watery space. And yeah, I feel like this could be your spirit animal, like in general, just based on what it said about you and like collecting your stories and telling them like an, in your show. <laughs> That's amazing. So what, what do we know? Another synchronicity for Mary and Shelly. Yes, Mary, for sure. Let's do Mary a spirit animal. See, this makes me curious about your guys' astrology charts now. Like, I know you guys are both Geminis, which is fascinating. I think only two Geminis could actually be, like, with the person of their same sign. Like, only a Gemini could fall in love with another Gemini <laughs> and have it work. Like, other signs, if I, I'm a Sagittarius, if I try to date a Sag, it just does not work it's like you gotta have that balance but but it's it's interesting because gemini energy is balanced in itself it's the twins so that's why i say it's probably like the only sign where two people could fall in love with, with each other of that sign anyway okay let's see so yeah um yeah it makes me curious if shelly you you probably maybe have water and earth in your chart, I'm wondering. Because there's so much more to your astrology than just your sun sign. So there's so much more than just being a Gemini. And that's what drives me crazy about people that don't believe in astrology is because it's not just your sun sign. There's so much more to it than and I've never met anybody that no that like gets a chart reading, their whole chart and not just their sun sign, and is like, nah, that's not me. Like, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so this is for Mary. Where is Mary at right now? What is her animal that she is embodying? Personifying. Mary. Okay, Mary, your spirit animal is... Oh! Damn, girl, that's 
Phoenix. You don't know what time you were born. You can call, you can get um, a copy of your birth certificate. Like you can call and get one. It's not impossible <laughs> if you know what hospital you were born in. Um, I've had to do that. Not for astrology reasons, but because I lost my birth certificate plenty of times. <laughs> no, she doesn't win. It's just totally different expressions. You're in the water element right now, and she's in the fire. So it's just different. Not, not better or worse. Okay, the phoenix. Freedom from suffering and past karma. Reincarnation. And this is part of that... Um, actually, I called it fire because I... It's a phoenix, but this is actually considered the first in the spirit section. So this is like the beginning of the spiritual ascension, essentially. Um, so I'll just read what it says. And these ones tend to be longer, just a little bit, in the spirit section. The phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or burning bridges with rage. The phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through practice and dedication, tapas. The essence of the phoenix is with us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. So Mary, I can't help but connect this to your this not that reading where you are supposed to be focusing on the moon, sitting with your subconscious things that might be... Um, that might be controlling you subconsciously without you even recognizing it. Um, continuing. At that very moment, the spark... I lost my spot. At that very moment, the spark of the phoenix is lit and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer run from who we are, what has happened to, our, to us, or what we have done. The stuckness and dead weight fall into the ashes, and a lightness and clarity emerge. As the stagnancy continues to smolder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up, and we begin to recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It's a sign the fire of transformation is upon your wings. And with the spirit um, section in this book, it connects it to yoga. And um, it kind of mentioned yoga before. And yoga, one of the principles of yoga is chakras. And this has to do with the root chakra or the first chakra. And that was, and that chakra is all about security and balance and <sighs> just feeling safe so so yeah there's something going on there's something about Mary right now see what I did there um there's something about Mary that is, is still just a little dead weight a little some type of baggage and I mean we all know especially in this group that we've got baggage <laughs> And we all have it. And there's just something that, um, there's just something, especially with that moon card. There's something bothering you that you can just let go of. And again, bringing light to those things, um, lighting them on fire, essentially. Um, you can bring light to them and set it on fire with that light of awareness and it's gone like I was saying with the moon card. So the universe really wants you to to know that you don't have to be controlled by whatever's bothering you because there is that sense of with the moon card and with the phoenix of that baggage having some type of control over what we're still doing today. So there's just something and it's probably something small compared to like what you have been through just based on what I've heard. So there's just something. Sit with it. See what it tells you. I don't know. But very, very, very good and positive. Both of you guys have great cards. I think that 
totally were perfect for both of you. So, not better or worse. Transcend the BS, faux show. Oh no. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I should check my privacy settings, especially when I go live like this. You're right. Yes, thank you guys so much, like, getting to know you like this. I feel like I got a free membership to channels or something. <laughs> like, I feel so honored. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys and your podcast. Um, but yeah, if that's it, I gave you all a chance. So, um, next time I will for sure open up, um, my privacy settings so that it can be shared. I should have thought to do that. That's my bad, but definitely will. So, yes, I think that will do it. Good night, you guys. Thank you so much. Anybody just now tuning in? <laughs> yeah, no problem. I do them. Um, I'll be here every week, guys, so come on back. <laughs> Anybody that is just now tuning in? Um, I think I'm going to close up shop for tonight, but you can feel free to uh, message me or DM me or wait until I come back around. Like I said, I think I'm going to do this pretty much every week. So if you have any questions about any of the things I listed, um, either DM me or save them for next week. But thank you guys so much for joining me on my first live video. I will probably post it on my YouTube channel then whenever I get that going and hopefully start a nice little collection going there. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will talk to you all later. <laughs>